What's up friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. Today's video is gonna be about interference and hum, but first, I wanna show you guys something. I picked up these earbuds from the dollar store. They were $4. Now, for four bucks, I had pretty low expectations, but you know what? They came with a um, little volume control dial here. Look, little dial here to control the volume. I don't know if you can see it. A little button. I don't know what the button does. I haven't tried it. Probably has something to do with the microphone. Um, but yeah, for four bucks, they actually work. And I had pretty low expectations for what to expect for sound quality out of these guys. And I gotta be honest with you, they sound even worse than I thought they would. These things sound horrible. So, I bought them for a specific use on a specific project where sound quality didn't really matter. Um, and now that I'm done with them, they're probably just gonna go in the garbage. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about interference and hum. What it is and how to avoid it. So in the air we breathe, all around us, we're surrounded by radio frequencies. Well, okay, maybe we don't really breathe them in, but they're there. They're in the air and they're all around us. They either pass right through us or they go around us but they're present and they carry energy. So as these radio waves are going through the air, when they hit a conductor, like a wire or anything metal, that conductor will absorb some of their energy. Do you remember lesson three, how sound travels as electricity? It's fluctuations of voltage. So when you have any kind of a wire anywhere in your recording studio, it could be a microphone cable, a guitar cable, or even a wire inside a piece of gear. That wire can pick up some of the energy from the radio waves as voltage fluctuations, and when it goes down the circuit and becomes amplified, the interference will get amplified along with the desired audio that's on that same path. And that's actually how a radio works. The antenna is tuned to pick up specific radio frequencies, and those will induce a small voltage into the antenna, and that voltage represents the sound. Although it's extremely weak, within the radio, it'll have an amplifier circuit that amplifies it and makes it louder, and then there you go. You can hear all of your least favorite songs from the radio. So now you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. If any conductor picks up the radio, how come I don't hear the radio every time I plug my guitar in or every time I plug a microphone in? That's a good question, and I'm glad you thought of it. And the answer is, they do. Now to pick up a radio station clearly, the cable, which in this case is the antenna, has to be the exact right length and materials to match that specific frequency of that radio station. High impedance unbalanced cables such as a guitar cable are especially prone to picking up interference. Though the chances of everything lining up perfectly are actually quite slim, but not impossible. There can be the rare instance where a guitar amp or a keyboard or any piece of gear actually plays a radio station. I've had it happen. Another common source of interference is the 120 volt electrical lines that you have in your house. The nature of alternating current is that it alternates between positive and negative. And in our house, it does this 60 times per second. Now what happens is this rapid shift from positive to negative emits an electromagnetic field. And that electrical field can be induced into a nearby conductor. And that's actually how transformers work. They're comprised of two coils of wire right next to each other. And when current is passed through one coil, it basically jumps into the other coil with different properties of voltage, impedance, and current. And that's the whole point of a transformer. It provides an isolated copy of the signal. And by controlling the parameters, you can control the electrical properties coming out of that transformer. DC current, or like a constant voltage current, will not. So anytime you have an extension cord running somewhere with power going through it, be mindful not to run any microphone cables or guitar cables close by it. For microphone cables, leave at least three inches. And for guitar cables, I'd recommend at least six inches away. Run all your electrical cords together and run all your audio cords together and keep them separate from each other. Whenever you have to run an audio cable by an electrical cord, have them cross at 90 degrees to minimize the area that it can pick up interference from that cord. If any of the gear you're using plugs into the wall with a wall wart, be careful not to run any audio cables anywhere close to that wall wart because what that wall wart has is a transformer on the inside and that emits a bit of a stronger electromagnetic field. Another common source of interference is poor grounding. Every piece of audio equipment should have a proper electrical grounding. The whole idea of grounding, such as the grounding shield on an audio cable or the outer shell of any piece of audio gear, is to provide a shield around the electronics that are carrying the signal, and that shield will absorb the interference, and it just gets dissolved into the ground. Now, since all of the hum and interference gets captured by this shielding and drained into the ground, the idea is that it never makes it into the signal wire. 
Microphones themselves can also pick up interference. Condenser microphones especially because the capsule converts sound energy into tiny fluctuations of electrical voltage. And the capsule itself, a component or a wire, can act as an antenna. And then it goes into the microphone body, gets amplified, but if it picked up any interference there, then that interference gets amplified as well with all the sound. That's why a high quality microphone, such as an ISK microphone, will have the entire audio circuit completely encased in a conductive material, and that acts as a Faraday cage and doesn't allow any interference to get in there. There's a lot of sources of interference. Radio stations, two-way radios, walkie-talkies, TVs, remote controllers, garage door openers, cell phones, microwaves, fluorescent lights, Certain light switch dimmers, you know your house where you can dim the lights? Some of those are actually pretty bad and they'll put a lot of noise on the electrical current that's supplied by that whole breaker panel. Apartment buildings are especially problematic for interference because there's just so many of these problematic sources all crammed together in one neat little package called an apartment complex. And there's not really anything you can do to get away from it other than leave the building. And the last thing I'll touch on is fluorescent lights. If you have these in your studio, get rid of them. They are horrible. They emit a lot of interference. It's basically a broadband field of white noise as radio waves. And your gear will pick it up in small amounts. Whether you notice it or not, it's there. So that's the lowdown on interference. If you have any cool stories or weird things that you've experienced, tell me about it in the comments section down below. Now I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel so that I can keep giving you guys more awesome videos to help you learn. So help me help you and smash that like button down there for me. I'm going to be coming out with tons more videos. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you can get all the free content that I am making for you. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.